All right, ladies and gentlemen, hello, and welcome back once again to Inside Analysis, a virtual summit today. As a matter of fact, we're going to have a couple of presentations and then our usual radio show after that. Your host here, Eric Cavanaugh. I'm so excited to have two of the smartest people I've met in the room today, Aaron Wilson from Athena Solutions, very, very cool data governance, data catalog consulting firm. If you need help with your integrations, give them a call. And Kirit Basu is here as well from Metaphor. I've known Kirit for a number of years now through a couple of different companies. Very, very intelligent guy asking the hard questions. He can give you the hard answers, I promise. And he's with Metaphor. Big thanks to Metaphor for sponsoring our series of events around data catalogs. So very quickly, data catalog, it's the new center of gravity. These are not new. They've been around for a number of years, but I can tell you there's a whole movement in this space right now and some very interesting technologies coming out. They really focus on the consumption and the use of these technologies because guess what if people don't use your technology it doesn't do much good some of the data catalogs out there are kind of complex they've been around for a while they do good things but uh, it takes a lot of effort to get them rolling some of the newer solutions are easier to get rolling and that's very important we'll talk about that on the show but with that let me hand it off to aaron wilson of athena take it away yes hello everyone welcome and thank you for joining us uh, as Eric said, today we're going to talk about a series of products which has emerged in the marketplace and is gathering a great deal of attention these days from all kinds of organizations that are trying to get a better handle on data management and more specifically metadata management. And it is a new generation, as Eric uh, mentioned, of data catalog products. And we'll switch to this. Um, there you go. Well, well you know. Okay, I had a slide in there that I'm not seeing now. <laughs> okay, um, but yeah, we can move on from here. This is fine. Um, as I said, my name is Aaron Wilson. I'm with Athena Solutions. We're a data management consultancy and I'm gonna be speaking here for a short while uh, about Athena's approach to data catalog. Talk a little bit about what data catalog is, how it fits into an or overall data governance framework and explain a little bit why data catalog, the modern generation of data catalog products represents such a significant advance in terms of the tools companies can employ to effectively govern their data. Uh, then later in the program, we're gonna be talking with Kirit Basu from Metaphor, a company which has taken a very unique approach and is bringing in some very innovative features in terms of the data catalog solution that they offer. Um, so just briefly, when we talk about data catalog, platforms, what are they? Well, generally, Data Catalog is a tool that essentially starts with the basic idea of a tool that's been around for quite some time, and most of you, I'm sure, are familiar with. It was originally called the Data Dictionary, um, and we can generally refer to it as a metadata repository. Um, but the new generation of products use some technologies that were not widely available even just a few years ago. Uh, including AI, including generative AI, uh, in order to make the idea of the data dictionary more useful, easier to execute and maintain, and more user-friendly, and so forth. Um, the slide we're looking at here is a slide that we often use at Athena to basically illustrate what our take on an effective data governance framework looks like for many organizations. And each one of these components you see along the base of the screen there uh, is an important part of an effective data governance strategy. You can see we start with people, uh, then we have processes and standards, data architecture, metadata management, data quality, and security and compliance. And I think we could say that data catalog functionally falls under metadata management, but it can also contribute a great deal towards enhancing and integrating all of the components that you see here. And a great example of that is the people component. And at Athena, we always put people first on this list for a good reason, which is that adoption and participation from people in the organization is really what makes a governance program successful. But the current generation of data catalog platforms, because of the fact that they bring the governance process uh, to a more immediate place, uh, make it more tangible to the end user, they have the power to encourage participation in the governance process, which is extremely valuable. Um, so let's talk a little bit about Data Catalog's evolution and its arrival uh, in terms of a tool that helps companies uh, manage metadata. 
Um, when we talk about metadata, we're talking about data definitions, relationships, lineage, and so forth. And if we think of the history of the data dictionary, as uh, we talk about early days coming through the 90s and into the 2000s, technology evolving very rapidly led to organizations taking in processing ever increasing amounts of data. And as a result, firms found that there was increasing confusion throughout the organization regarding how certain data elements should be defined. There was a lack of agreement on how data series, for example, should be calculated. And very often it's very difficult to find out where a particular data point or data series came from. Uh, so to address this confusion, people came up with the concept of the data dictionary. Oh, let's see if I can get this slide to work. There we go. Um, so there's our data dictionary. And of course, I'm being a little bit funny there with the visual um, because nobody ever put together a data dictionary that literally looks like a large agent looking book. But you can see the point I'm trying to illustrate here. Essentially, uh, with the title of the slide, the need was there, but the technology was not. Uh, a typical data dictionary in the early days would probably have been maybe even a Word document or possibly a database. Then over time, some more fit for purpose tools came into the picture. Um, but in general, a data governance team would do the work of compiling uh, all of these data definitions, some idea of lineage, et cetera, into a central repository. Um, and you might be able to put some links to sample data, maybe links to dated lineage documentation in there. But with most of these tools, there was really no way around the massive effort of just gathering all the metadata. And the product also had the limitation of being a static repository, essentially. There was really no mechanism to quickly and easily update it as the data ecosystem of the organization changed. And this is a huge limitation when you consider that companies are dealing with ever-changing data ecosystems these days, new data sources, new ETL integration, uh, et cetera, often on a daily basis. And that was before machine learning and data science showed up, as I say in the slide. Uh, so a governance team might go through this effort to produce this comprehensive dictionary and put the word out. And they might say, finally, we have our complete data dictionary, but that same data dictionary had a tendency to become outdated very quickly. Uh, so not long afterwards, they might be asking the organization, is anyone actually looking at this thing? So the question that many people in data management and governance started to ask was, what if, what if we had a tool that could read or interrogate the organization's actual data assets and update the metadata information automatically to keep it current? Uh, what if we could generate up-to-date graphical data lineages? Uh, what if we had a tool where we could do all of that and also make it very easy for users to collaborate, um, to ask questions, and so forth? So, uh, fortunately, uh, and as I say, largely within the last five years or so, um, various new technologies have evolved and come in to address a lot of these challenges. And a whole bunch of firms have stepped in to harness these new technologies to create the modern data catalog. And as we look at this slide, we can see we have uh, several features associated with these platforms. One, of course, would be harvesting, as I alluded to before, that the ability to scan or read in an organization's actual data assets and retrieve that metadata. It's a huge benefit in time in terms of uh, time saved, gathering that information and effort as well, especially when this process is repeatable. Uh, lineage, uh, the fact that these tools, not only can you harvest the metadata from various data assets, but the, the, uh, the tools have the ability to figure out and graphically represent data flows, which is a great benefit. Um, I might ask many people in the audience, how many of us have had to deal with data lineage diagrams that are hopelessly out of date? Um, I know many of us have. Um, so being able to generate lineage from the actual data assets is a huge advantage. Um, interactivity and collaboration. We have now these tools have chat, discussions, social media kinds of interactions built in uh, where we've evolved to where a user can jump right in and have an interactive discussion with SMEs from the organization. Um, as Kirit is going to show us, Metaphor has made some really fantastic functional advances that take this capability to another level uh, and search and ease of use. 
So the ability to ask natural language queries to the data catalog itself, um, AI powered search is a huge benefit in terms of getting the answers to our data questions quickly. And again, as we'll see, Metaphor has really honed in and done a lot to enhance search capability. It's fair to say it's a step ahead of what uh, many of their peers are offering. And um, yes, I titled this slide, here we are. And from this slide, we see a sampling. Um, it's not nearly even a complete list. Um, but these are just a few of the companies that have come into the marketplace with data catalog solutions. Uh, you can see metaphors in there along with several others. Uh, I think it's fair to say that all of these platforms have certain strengths. Some have a particular competitive niche or differentiator. Um, as I stated before, Metaphor has developed an approach with some great functionality that really has a lot to offer, especially in the key areas that I just mentioned. Um, and with that, I think that gives me a good segue to hand it over to Kirit, who can tell you more about Metaphor and what they're bringing to the table when it comes to modern data catalog. That sounds great, uh, Kirit. If you would, uh, Aaron, just stop sharing. Yes, for sure. And Kirit will share. And folks, we've got our whole radio show coming up after this, so don't be shy. Send your questions in at any time. There we go. One sec. Okay. Yeah. There we go. All right. All right. Excellent. Let me know if you see my screen. I see your screen. Awesome. Um, okay. So, Aaron, first of all, thank you. Uh, you've basically done all the selling I needed to tell. <laughs> uh, all the problems you've described, those are exactly the types of things that we're solving for. So high level, I'll, I'll keep this presentation really, really short. I want to actually get into the demo and show you guys around. But we, we think of it as a social platform for data. And it really goes back to you know the wonderful slide that Aaron had, that people come first. And that's one of the things that we've been missing in this industry for, for pretty much ever. Uh, Every single time we go to anyone who's worked with any kind of catalog before, uh, the first thing they mention is a oh, catalog. Oh yeah, we have one of those. We have some very, very expensive one of those. And by the way, that's where data goes to die. And really what they're saying is effectively what Aaron was sort of mentioning is that, yeah, you could have a whole bunch of technical pieces and you know they might work, they might not work, whatever that might be. But generally speaking, catalogs are tools designed just for the data team. And if the data team like it, great, they use it, but then no one else outside cares about it. From our perspective, we think that everyone who participates in that data ecosystem, whether they're a consumer, they're a producer, especially if they're like a, like a non-technical consumer, for example, they too have a part to play in all of this, right? Like they, they are consumers, they have needs, they have questions, et cetera, et cetera. So we try to make sure that everyone in the company can participate around data. So high level, that's that's kind of what we do. Uh, very, very quick uh, sort of uh, origin story. Uh, the, the founding team uh, was, at, was at LinkedIn before. Uh, they had used another catalog, I, which I shall not name. It's one of the it's one of the names that showed up on <laughs> Aaron's screen at some point, but uh, they basically decided, yep, that's not really going to work. Certainly not at LinkedIn scale, certainly not for the kind of capabilities that they need. They went out and built a catalog, which effectively became Data Hub, and then also very quickly realized like, yeah, this is a fantastic catalog as far as technical catalogs go, but then no one outside the technical team cares about it, right? And fundamentally, that has been the issue all the way through. We've always thought about like, how do we make sure that everyone can participate? That's that's kind of why Metaphor exists. Uh, with that, I'm gonna very quickly jump to just this slide uh, to show you at a high level. So outside the social sort of motif that we've put in, uh, we do, address these fundamental problems, right? So uh, it's certainly about search and discovery, but as I'll show you in a little bit, we have some nicer ways to do search and discovery. Um, certainly governance is, is the most important need that people are talking about. We specifically care about a very agile way to do governance. Uh, and you know we've got customers across the board from folks who have pretty old school sort of governance uh, uh, models and governance architectures, all the way to folks doing data mesh, data products, et cetera. So we cover that entire spectrum. Um, 
for the most part, we've seen that data literacy, democratization, et cetera, is kind of like the stated goal of most of our customers. And to that end, we have a whole bunch of capabilities, especially some AI augmented ones, which really help make that process a lot more easier and better. Um, and then finally, if you are a technical person, yes, we have lots and lots of technical details. Like it is after all, uh, like underneath the covers, it's a very, very technical catalog. And so when you're trying to do things like lineage and root cause analysis, et cetera, we can meet you there as well. So with that, I'm gonna actually start my demo, not inside the catalog. Uh, and this is, this is one of those reasons where uh, it becomes really apparent where this is really a tool for everyone. So think about this. This is a you know a Slack channel where people are encouraged to ask questions. Uh, normally, uh, with most organizations, you'd have a data uh, support team who would be manning the station, and then they'd you know respond to questions. Also, those questions are repeat, uh, right? Like they come back over and over again. And so one of the things that we've done is we've built out. Uh, essentially uh, an, a Gen AI uh, system, which will look at all the metadata that we currently have within our environment, right? So uh, just to give you a very quick example, uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, how about this one, right? So what data do we have for bikes? Now, what's happening over here is that the system is looking at every single piece of technical metadata that we have. So that's your tables, columns, dashboards, what have you, their descriptions. We're looking at all the descriptions out of tables and uh, columns. We're looking at every you know, uh, business glossary, every um, uh, sort of uh, data dictionary or any other FAQ that they might have in the system and coming up with a gen AI answer to answer these kind of questions, right? And so what normally took a support team pretty much a dedicated effort to keep this going now happens pretty much instantaneously. So, so that's one of those things where we're outside the catalog and we you can still get value from it. Here's another, I'm looking at some arbitrary, you know, this happens to be a Power BI dashboard, could be any, we support a whole bunch of dashboards. Uh, questions you might have looking at this, like, wait, can I trust this? Where's this coming from? Who's the contact? Who should I get in touch with, et cetera? And so we have this capability where you can just click on a little web extension. We'll show you a whole bunch of content around this. So certainly, you know, who to get in touch with, uh, what are the tags associated with it. You can have descriptions about the data. You could also have basically tune into conversations about data that people are having. Other, you know, folks across other silos, for example, you could certainly, you know, make a request for some, uh, some sort of, uh, you know, update to a report or access or things of that sort. Um, and then finally, we, we show kind of like a minimized version of lineage over here. Uh, uh, you know, obviously this shows you which table stuff is coming from, but one thing I'll, I'll draw your attention to here is you'll notice here, this says caution. And here's this very simple example, a data quality test failed somewhere far upstream, right? So if I were a regular user looking at this dashboard, I, heck, I, I probably don't even know what's, what the heck Snowflake is, let alone which table something is coming from, but the system has basically told me like, hey, be careful of using this data because there is a data quality problem way upstream of that, right? So this is probably your point of view where you could say, hey, yeah, maybe I should not trust this. Let me reach out and ask the question, et cetera, right? So, so that, that's another interface where you really don't have to be trained on Metaphor to, to use these kind of capabilities. Um, very quickly, in, in the context of the actual app, this is what our front screen looks like. You know, obviously it's like a social feed of sorts. This is all content about people or assets that you care about. Uh, that That's what sort of gets uh, brought to the front. Um, you could do a whole variety of searches. So, you know, certainly we are talking about AI. So there's a whole bunch of uh, AI questions you can just ask. Uh, we certainly have keyword searches that you can make uh, or advanced searches, you know, show me things that exist here or were created there, et cetera, et cetera. So a lot of search capabilities as well. I'll jump right into one particular asset. So the point of view we are looking at here is kind of like zoomed into a single table. Uh, you'll notice all the usual you know, technical uh, uh, details, size, columns, et cetera. This was the data quality stuff that I was talking about. So we, we basically integrate with state-of-the-art data quality tools are out there and present their results. And, and more importantly, as I mentioned, socialize those results. Um, you can see a whole bunch of descriptions. You can see tags. Uh, lineage is 
basically automatically computed. So every night, this just happens automatically. We go scan all of these systems. We will show a whole bunch of details, including like ETL jobs in the middle. Uh, I'll give you a very simple example of the kind of details you can get into if you wanted to, let's say, make a change on this uh, table and you're wondering like, okay, who cares about this? Where is it going to, et cetera? Well, you could see all of that in the lineage, but you can also go and see like, oh yeah, these many people viewed the data in uh, Power BI or these many, you know, this is the time that they've done it. So when you make changes, you could be very surgical about who to inform, when to make the changes, things of that sort. Uh, and all this happens both at a table level as well as column level. So you can see all those gory details there. Um, one last thing I'll uh, quickly mention before uh, we move on is uh, we, we have a basically a document center where you can create any kind of documentation. So certainly glossaries is one of them, but we have customers creating all kinds, right? Like you know, FAQs and data stories and things of that sort. But one of the things that we've heard a lot is no one really likes to write documentation. It's the most painful thing ever. So one of the capabilities we've added is uh, you, you, all you need to do is provide whatever the metric or whatever you care about. And you, when you hit create with AI, we are looking at all the context we have within our system. So every other table description, every other like you know company-oriented description, and coming up with a suggested uh, glossary term which is usually orders of magnitude more than what our customer. Most customers will at best have like a single line. Oh, LTV stands for blah, blah, blah. Uh, that's it. And then they look at this and say, oh yeah, you know, we've always wanted to document all the other things. What happens when it goes out, how to interpret it, et cetera, et cetera. Well, we just never got around to it because it's kind of painful to do. So these kind of things really accelerate the whole process of doing, creating documentation, generating, you know, uh, doing governance activities, things of that sort. So I'll stop there. Uh, this is a very quick preview. There's obviously lots more where that comes from. That's this is really important stuff, guys. And I like the way Kirit you were showing the interactivity, how you can enter the catalog from any direction, from the outside, from the inside, and just get different views of things. You don't have to be inside or an IT person to interact with this. And that's the key, right? And you're also indexing all these posts, right? You index the posts as they happen or that night. Is that right? All that happens. Uh, I, in fact, one capability I didn't show uh, is we have the ability to for you to take a conversation in Slack or Teams that you're having about data and like with one click, summarize it and then persist it in there as well. So it's like mm -hmm. creating in, or persisting institutional knowledge literally with one click. Well, and see, you're picking up on a huge trend here. We're going to do our radio show just a minute, folks. But uh, the fact that you're leveraging Gen AI in a text generative sort of way to reflect back the insights that are being captured by the system, that's a really big deal because previously you would have to write these things out as insights, articulate them clearly, and then post them somewhere and then hope that someone found them. But what you folks are doing, if I understand it correctly, is you're capturing any comment someone makes, indexing it, and then immediately goes into this repository. And you've got a bit of a graph structure underneath, as I understand it. I think it's Mongo. And, uh, and you're using that to be able to very quickly allow people to ask questions and get answers about what data means, right? That's right. And, and that happens pretty much instantaneously. You, you know, you could have a conversation happening in one silo where they've sort of finally persisted what a metric means. And pretty much instantaneously, someone else across the organization will be able to query and ask those questions. That's crazy. Well, folks, our radio show is coming up here, so stand by.